uh, there is a new video out of a gentleman who is very angry at the outcome of the Royal Rumble. But, Rich, you have the first uh, a year ago. Mm -hmm. This man uh, did the same thing. Now, he has a what appears to be a living girlfriend. She's not an unattractive woman. And they live in an apartment which was probably like your first apartment or if you're uh, living in one now. Rich and I lived in the same apartment complex for a year. And it, it's like, remember when you had no furniture <laughs> and the carpets were white and the walls were white yeah. and you just had things stacked up in the corners and things like that? Yeah, you had like the thrift shop couch that you got cheap and, and your bed might have just actually been a very uh, neatly... Uh, blanket on top of a mattress in the corner. That's kind of what this guy has. Yeah, this is reminds everyone of their twenties. But he, this is from last year. Very upset about the outcome of a match, I believe, involving The Rock. Mm -hmm. Here we go. That's two now. Get out. Don't be so mean. Get out. God. That's what I think about you, Rock. That's what I think about you, Rocky. Get out. Seriously, please. Okay, now, what he did with the DVD there, he took, by the way, it's a giant pile of just crap all over the floor. He kicks a table, and there's all of these toys, wrestling toys, and wrestling DVDs everywhere. <laughs> there's obviously a room devoted. Instead of a guest room, they've devoted a room to his wrestling toys. It's the wrestle room. It's, it's the seduction layer. That's what he likes to call it as well. Like the cat room. But yes, it is, James Stewart. But he takes one of the DVDs and he smashes it. It actually reminds me of a, of a, a roommate, psycho roommate that my one of my best friends had in college who got so pissed one time, he took a uh, DVD and he bit it and it sliced his lip open. Well, that will show everyone. <laughs> in your face. Yeah, that DVD that you paid for is really going to uh, feel bad the next day. So this uh, past Sunday, I guess Batista won some title, and I, I don't know what the situation was, it but was a lot of people were It was outrageous. It was outrageous. Well, this guy was back. He is back in a big way and uh, not happy at all, and once again, his girlfriend had the video camera out. That's it. That's it. Notice how out of breath he is. He climbed up about six steps. <laughs> he's not a small gentleman. No. Well, you can imagine. He's climbed up these six steps in an outrage, and he's huffing and puffing already. He's never going to buy another pay-per-view again, which is even in a moment of intense anger and disappointment. Don't don't say crazy things like this. I mean, this is out of hand. I'm not Don't follow me. Michael. He left. Batista left for three years and I just back with the Royal Rumble. Feel the pain. <laughs> yes, James Stewart. He is right now. He's not enjoying this. <laughs> How about a courtesy flush? We should do a bit. <laughs> we should do a bit. Is it a porno, a tennis match, or a man mad about wrestling? <laughs> <laughs> this poor room. I mean, this room is getting the brunt of everything. <laughs> the junkyard dog doll is saying, "Whoa! What are you? Easy. It's like a horror Toy Story." What is that female tennis star from Martina Navratilova? Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Go! Get out! Every time you laugh at me, is everything you want to break? <laughs> These 
grunts. <laughs> it sounds passionate. Yes, it does. It does. <laughs> and a four-hand winner. I better not have anything with teeth on it. Maybe not because he's not good on the his own DVD, is he? Or I wasn't stupid enough to buy it. Okay, you, you know what? You know what this guy rides me off. Remember, uh... next question, Jeff. Where are you? Right there. Yeah. Um, I just want to thank each and every one of y'all for all you've done to your bodies. <laughs> it's still real to me, damn it! <laughs> thank you, thank y'all guys. Y'all are awesome. Thank you so much, Mister Funk, for saying what needed to be said. <laughs> And by the way, has anyone ever said thank you so much, Mr. Funk? <laughs> Mr. Terry, no. Mr. no. Mr. Funk. Every time you laugh at me, is everything on a break? <laughs> what is that? I walked Bob Dylan up on stage. That's right. <laughs> it's that angry that's guy. Right. That's, that's, that's right. How many times have we as a nation said, Mr. Funk, <laughs> thank you so much for never backing down? I just want to thank each and every one of y'all for all you've done to your bodies. It's still real to me, damn it! Mr. Funk is another man with very wet, curly, long hair. I have to say you've done so much. Your hair in a constant state of sweat and Get curliness. Out. Get out! Seriously, please! It's a poor girl. But good for her. She just follows him around and the laughs camera at him. and laughs at him. <laughs> the best part was at the end there, the, the DVD where he's throwing that out. He destroyed one room. He, like, broke some furniture in one room, walked to another room, and in that room... There's no furniture. There's just a bunch of DVDs all over the floor. Yeah. Nothing but wrestling DVDs, and we're talking about hundreds He's making DVD of DVDs. So he seriously is. He's, like, picking them up and throwing them around the room, and I'm going to break this DVD. No more WrestleMania. It's pretty funny. All right. Uh, Mark, uh, Mark, you are on the Toucher and Rich show. Well, I kind of can relate to this guy because when I was six years old, Hulk Hogan lost the title. And I was so extremely upset that I threw my title belt away and literally attempted to run away from home. And you were how old? Uh, six. I was well, six, sir. That seems like the proper reaction for a six-year-old. <laughs> uh, it, was, it was traumatizing. I mean, the entire, the audience, every single, there wasn't a dry eye the audience. It was a terrible thing at the time. I mean, Hulkamania was coming to an end. I mean, you know, Hulkamania was running wild. I remember how disappointed I was when the Iron Sheik, uh, uh, when he broke the Iron Sheik's camel clutch back then 30 years ago. Madison Square Garden, WrestleMania 1. This was the Lost Undertaker Survivor Series. And it was a bold move. It was a bold statement. I ran away at the end of my street and realized I'm not allowed to cross the busy street. So I sat there deep in thought for a while. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I got my point across. So then I went home. It was probably 15 minutes later, but to me, it felt like two days. You know yeah. Right yeah, that was but like when I was going to run away from home when I was six years old. And we would say we were going to build a boat. And we'd take a two-by-four and put a nail in it and say, all right, that's enough of that. <laughs> a little more, fight. A little more difficult to uh, to get away than that. Every time you laugh at me, is everything on a break? <laughs> Mr. Funk, you've brought the funk to so many. Next question, Jeff. Where are <laughs> this is the best. He's this kid sitting at like a gym. He's not a kid. No, no. no I, kid, boy, I say kid. Uh, no, you're he's, right. He's, he's, he's like very he's, much he's in his thirties. He's in his thirties, and he's sitting there with a notebook. So these wrestlers are sitting in the middle of like what looks like a high school gymnasium, doing a question and answer session, and then they go to. Gumpy Magoo here. Next question, Jeff, where are you? Right there. Yeah. Um, I just want to thank each and every one of y'all <laughs> for all you've done to your bodies. <laughs> it's still real to me, damn it. <laughs> I mean, thank Make you. Easy, man. <laughs> thank you, all guys. You were awesome. Thank you so much, Mr. Funk, for saying what needed to be said. <laughs> I don't want to see another one of these. Well, thank you. No, thank you, sir. It's nothing I'm not used to. 
<laughs> All right, so we will talk to Peter Abraham in uh, just a moment. Talk to him about the uh, David Ortiz situation, uh, being interviewed with the dog in his lap.